have been providing loans for working capital, day-to-day -day running of uh, small businesses, and has, in a sense, democratized the space of uh, credit in the country. So it's been really um, an exciting space. But here's the number one thing you need to know, and this we got from the digital uh, credit report, the digital credit audit report that was done by FSD, and this was done last year in November. So, like we said, it's been deepening financial inclusion. In fact, up to six million Kenyans have borrowed at least one digital loan um, for running their businesses. Remember, these were typical SMEs that had been shunned by big banks. So up to six million Kenyans have taken one loan and they've done it for running their day-to-day -day businesses and working capital, their day-to-day -day needs, okay? Now, when they did this report, at the time, they took a look at about 110 apps that were present in the market at the time. And we'll come back to those numbers and why they keep fluctuating up and down. But here's the number two thing you need to know about uh, digital lending apps. They're convenient. They are discreet. You could be doing this on your phone even as we are discussing this right now. Here's another important thing. No collateral. Because remember, that has been something that has been difficult for particularly women and youth who don't have logbooks, who don't have title deeds and the traditional collateral that the big banks ask for. There are no forms to sign on these mobile lending apps. You don't have to walk to a banking branch. So this is one of the things that they say has really helped to push SMEs and small, small businesses to enable them get the cash they need to run their businesses. But even though they're convenient, there is something that you must take a look at, the terms and conditions. Important to go through these one by one. Let me give you an example of some of them. One, the fact that they access your data. They're looking at your GPS. Where have you been? What sort of restaurants and other establishments are you visiting? They are looking for your M-Pesa records to be able to tell just what your cash flow looks like, your phone logs, your contacts, your messages. All of these they are looking for. And though they promise not to use this data or for anything other than to check your credit worthiness, there has been some cases of where they have breached that, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But the key thing to remember is you accept these terms and conditions, right? Here's another thing in the terms and conditions, the interest rates and any other fees that will be um, levied on that loan that you are taking. What are the interest rates? An average of between 7 to 15% monthly. If you compound this to an annual rate, then you start to see it actually might be more than the traditional banks. Are there things like a registration fee, like a membership fee? These are things you need to read through before you hit agree on the terms and conditions that are provided there. The number four thing you need to know is exactly what we talked about when it comes to your data. They say they won't use it, but we have heard of some firms doing exactly this, what is called debt shaming. So I have a loan with company X and they call my father, sister, brother, husband, um, or friend and say, hi, you know, could you ask Yvonne to pay back her loan? So this, they say, erodes the very gains of making it convenient, of making it discreet, and of giving dignity to those who are trying to run their businesses from day to day. Okay, And we'll talk about that. And it is because of debt shaming that many players are starting to ask for this, the number five thing to know, regulation. Why would we need regulation? Well, if you take a look at the others, we have a Banking Act for the banks, we have the SACO Societies Act for the SACOs, but what about for the digital lenders? Easy entry, easy exit. Remember we said at the beginning there were about 110 apps when FSD was doing that report? Well, that number has fluctuated quite a bit. In September 2018, there were 110 mobile lending apps. By April last year, 65 had been pulled down, 47 new ones. So all that people are saying who are calling for regulation in this sector are saying it is actually for consumer protection, for you and I. It is not necessarily something that restricts market actors in this space. But also another thing to talk about with regulation is to help you in terms of dispute resolution. Where are they holding this data? Is it in the country or is it abroad? Many of these companies are actually not necessarily Kenyan. So if you have a dispute with them, do you take the case to the US or to Norway where many of these companies are incorporated by law? So many who are calling for regulation, including this man here, the central bank governor, Dr. Patrick Njoroge, are saying that there's a need for an overarching regulatory framework that enables you to be protected. That is the five. All the five things you need to know about digital lending in the country, the good and the bad.